I keep, observe, Old Testament law. Old Testament law, the Deuteronomic legislation, today recodified in Judaism as halakha. The Christians have to keep Old Testament law. Some have pointed out that Jesus said, not a jot or tittle will pass away, therefore we do. What does this mean? I have warned many times about the oldest trick in the book. The oldest trick in the book is what we see in the epistle to the Galatians. It's when Satan attempted to seduce the church, seduce Christians, into living under two covenants at the same time. There have always been groups that have done this. In the early church, there were heretical sects of Ebionites who had such practices. The Seventh-day Adventists had such practices. The extreme access of the modern messianic movement has such practices, even though there are other messianic Jews who would obviously shun it and not in any legalistic way be observant or make that compulsory for others, especially for non-Jews. Nonetheless, it's still a problem, the oldest trick in the book. To answer this question concisely, do we have to keep Old Testament law? Not a jot or tittle will pass away. It's true. Every Jew is under one covenant or another. Either Israel, Israelis, Israelites, Jewish people keep the law, the Torah, the Pentateuch perfectly, perfectly, which they cannot do since 70 AD there's no temple or high priest anyway. The Messiah would come and die before the temple would be destroyed. So now they have to keep something perfectly that's impossible to keep or they can trust the Messiah who fulfilled it on their behalf. God demonstrates the fallen nature of man and the human condition through the perilous state of Israel and the Jews. If God chose another nation other than Israel or the Jews, they would have failed just as miserably. The Jews are a microcosm of the human condition. They teach about all nations and all peoples. The law of Moses demonstrates, through the example of Israel, the fallen nature of man and the fact that we need a Messiah who did keep God's law perfectly in both spirit and letter to atone for our sin, to compensate for the fact that we can't. To God, one man with no sin is worth more than all the men with sin. That's why the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, could die for all. So the law was there to impute sin. Now, it had other purposes. It was a shadow of Christ, and it kept Israel separate from the pagan nations and gave Israel and the Jews a higher standard of things like social justice, education, public health, etc., than the pagan nations which surrounded it. All of these things are true, but what does the New Testament say about the purpose of the law? It is fulfilled. Ritually, it is a shadow, a shadow. A shadow simply teaches about the substance. The substance is in Christ. A shadow of a hand will teach something about the hand. But once the hand comes into view, the shadow no longer has a purpose. The law was the same. Once we have Christ, we don't need a shadow of him. We simply use the law, that is the ritual law and the festal law of Israel. We use that as a teaching tool. The doctrine of atonement, for instance, is illustrated and demonstrated. It is taught through the Jewish Paschal Seder. The Jewish Passover teaches the doctrine of atonement and illustrates it. The Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, teaches the same kind of concept, what the Messiah did. Now, unless we understand how Jesus fulfilled these Old Testament laws, we won't understand what the New Testament means by them. Jesus died for my sins, he's the Lamb of God. Unless you understand the Old Testament and how he fulfilled the Old Testament, you won't really understand the New Testament. Hebrews makes this clear. We do need to study these Old Testament laws to understand how they point to Christ and how he fulfilled them and what that means for us in him. But it's not a mandatory ritual observance. There is no problem with Jewish believers and their families keeping these feasts in a Christ-centered way, in a Christocentric way. 
or using them as evangelistic instruments to reach other Jews, etc. That is all valid, perfectly valid according to the New Testament. But to legalistically put people in bondage to Old Testament law is something that Galatians calls witchcraft. You foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? Mesmero, we get the term mesmerized, literally to put the evil eye on somebody. Now let's go further with this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul writes the following. Verse 20, to the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might win Jews. To those who are under the Torah, as under the Torah. Notice Paul remained observant. But he did it as an evangelistic tool and as a witness to unsaved Jews. That's why he took the vow of the Nazarite in the book of Acts. It was voluntary and it was testimonial. It was part of an evangelistic strategy. That's all. He says, though not being under the Torah, that I might win those who were under the Torah. He was not under the law of Moses. He was under a different law. But he still remained observant as a Jew for reasons of testimony, culture, and evangelism. To those who were without law, a nomos, as without law, that is to the pagans, though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those who were without law. He was not an antinomian. He was not without law. To say, Jesus freed us from the law. He fulfilled the Torah. We are free. We can do what we want. This is not freedom. This is only another form of bondage. He who commits sin is slave to sin. That bondage is called antinomianism, lawlessness. The Antichrist will be the antidepon a nomon. Notice what he says. To those who are under the Torah, the law of Moses, in verse 20, but to those who are under the law of Christ, in verse 21. Two laws. When you drive across the border from Canada to the United States or the United States to Canada, you cannot say, I'm no longer in Canada. I can drive as fast as I want to. The speed limits no longer apply. Neither can you drive from the United States into Canada and say, I can do what I want to. The law no longer applies. You can drive from Great Britain through the Channel Tunnel into France. You cannot say, I'm no longer under British law, therefore I can do what I want. Or you cannot go from France to Great Britain and say, I can now do as I want. I'm not under law. No, you've left the jurisdiction of one body of law and come under another. Now, the laws between any two countries, hypothetically the United States and Canada, well, in both countries, you stop on red when you're driving. When the traffic light, the semaphore is red, you stop. Some laws are in common between the United States and Canada. Other laws are different. In the United States, you can make a right turn on a red light. In Great Britain, you cannot. The relationship between the Old and New Testament is the same. Some laws are in both testaments. Others are different. The moral law is repeated in the New Testament. Nine of the Ten Commandments are repeated in the New Testament. The only one of the Decalogue of the Ten Commandments not repeated in the New Testament is the day of worship. One man esteems one day, one another, let each be convinced in his own mind. Our Sabbath is in Christ. It's in the Messiah. It's in a person, not in a day. It's not wrong to worship on Saturday or Sunday or both days or every day. But it is a matter of choice, conscience, culture. The other nine are all reiterated. You shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. Those who try to say we're free in Christ, we're not under the law, we can do what we want. These people are lawless. They are governed by an antichrist spirit, the spirit of lawlessness. He is again the man of lawlessness, the anthropon a nomon. I've seen this happen many times when you point out to people Look, that's not scriptural. Oh, you're a Pharisee. You're under the law. No, you're lawless. 
There are do's and don'ts in the New Testament, the same as there are in the Old. There are do's and don'ts in the law of Christ, the same as there are in the law of Moses. Some of them are the same. Some are different. Does a Christian have to keep Old Testament law? When it is reiterated, if there is something found in the Old Testament that is reiterated as being also for believers in the New Testament, it is mandatory. It is not optional. It is mandatory. However, if it is not stated as being mandatory, it is optional. But you have no right to put it on somebody else. That's completely wrong. We have legalism. Legalism says you're saved by works, by law keeping. No, we're saved by grace. Christians do not keep God's law to get saved. Christians keep God's law because we've been saved. Then there's nomianism. Nomianism is a soft legalism, which basically says, well, we're saved by grace, but also by law. No, it's all by grace. Again, we keep the laws of Christ because we've been saved, not in order to get saved. Do we keep Old Testament law? It is only mandatory if it is reiterated and restated as being for believers in the New Testament. You may eat shrimp, you may eat lobster, or you may be a Jewish believer or married to a Jew who elects not to. Either way is good. It's between you and the Lord. You may worship on Saturday or you may worship on Sunday or both days. Between you and the Lord. Let no one act as your judge and don't judge another. But thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. That's for Israel. And that's for believers. The law of Moses and the law of Christ. You're under one law or another. But if you're not under one or the other, you are lawless. God bless.